Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you hear us? Yes, finally, yes. Okay. okay, Maharaj, I'm going to ask you to disable your video because I think we think this might be a bandwidth problem. Sometimes it happens that if we disable the video, if all the participants then disable their video, we get a clearer audio feed. You'll still be able to see the screen and we just won't be able to see you, see you but we'll be able to hear you. Okay. It might just make it a little clearer. Okay. okay. Thank you, Marge. Okay, so we have Janmashtri Prabhu. Sorry, Ashutosh Prabhu wanted to say something. Ashutosh Prabhu. Maharaj, in the verse following Nashtrayashu Bhadrishu Varsha Shimanth Bhagavatam, it is said, Tada Rajasthamo Bhava Kama Lobha Daste Chet Etana Navitam Sthitam Satve Prasidati. So by regular attendance in Bhagavatam classes and by serving Bhagavatam devotees, Tamo and Rajaguna subside and everyone is situated in Saptoma. This, 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 this was the additional point I wanted to make. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ashita. By hearing... Janmashtri Prabhu. Janmashtri Prabhu. He's got his hand up. Janmashtri Prabhu. I, I, I was just out of the room for a second. I was just going to make a point about um, <clears throat> when um, Maharaj was speaking about, and, and Senator Keshava was asking a question about those that leave. And um, there was a study done by um, Yadananda Swami when he was the temple, or when he was. Um, president of the Bhaktivedanta College in Madhidesh, Belgium, of, of why sannyasis leave the movement. And he interviewed many of them that had left, stopped, um, or at least left sannyas, and many of them had stopped practicing. And there was something common in every single situation, and that was that they didn't develop relationships with um, other devotees. So that's what strengthens us tremendously in you know, the, if we don't do it, then there's a problem. Of course, that's coming up in the next um, shloka, shloka four. But um, anyway, that's. I just wanted to make that comment. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, importance of association, peer association. Especially, you know, even you may have a big position, you may be a, a real big leader, a spiritual master. You don't want to be surrounded by only your disciples. You got to have peer association. You got to have people who can, who can laugh at you and who can joke with you and who can see your faults and who can tell you, tell you things the disciples don't tell you. So it's important. I think the sannyas ministry now, when they train, when when someone is um, applied for sannyas has been accepted and he's on a waiting list, then they go through all these points, you know, to make sure that they have strong association, they set up facilities for that, where they're consulting with senior sannyasis and, you know, just regularly going on, you know, with yeah. the sex loving exchanges. Mm -hmm. And, and as, a, as a result, there's been much fewer fall downs from the sannyas ashram. I, I attribute it to the work that the sannyas ministry has done. I mean, you know better, but it seems like it's seems like it's uh, been a, quite a turning point for our movement. And we have to also remember that in Prabhupada's time, the people taking sannyas were much younger than what they are now. Yeah. And the, most of the people taking sannyas also were coming. They were more. They were Western bodies, who were not so much aware of what sannyasi culture is and what the vow of sannyas means. And they, they were entered into the sannyas order maybe prematurely. Yeah. So, yeah, now it's, um, they, they have to be a certain age and they have to um, be on trial for several years. Yeah, usually 40, uh, usually 40 is like the minimum age. 
40. Yeah, but, right. but in Prabhupada's time, you know, you had people, twenty, they were all 20s, you know, young men, <laughs> very young men. I, 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 my first GBC was 19 when he took sannyas, I think. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah. Yeah. That's a point. So certainly different. So. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Can we, Prabhu? Yeah. Krishna Keshava, thank you. Yeah. Someone like to Janmashtami me, Prabhu, you could read this. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I'm here. I just I had to unmute myself. Avoiding Ayahara. Religion entails understanding the laws of God because the proper execution of these laws ultimately leads one out of material entanglement. That is the true purpose of religion. Unfortunately, people accept religion for material prosperity because of Ayahara or an excessive desire for such prosperity. Right. Would you like to comment on this, Prabhu? Yeah, I know that they have, like in America, they have these mega churches, you know, where they get like two, three thousand people coming on Sundays. And the main thrust, the proof of the, the, the um, um, effectiveness of their religious pursuits is on how materially prosperous they are. <laughs> so it's um, it definitely in the way it works. Um, and you know, it, but they get more and more entangled. As we see, as we advance in Krishna consciousness, we care less and less about you know these um, material opulence. And it's not an issue for us as we uh, make progress in devotional service. Even as we're hospice, you know, that it's not something that we worry so much about. We're, we we know Krishna will take care of us. So. Um, He's our ever well wishing friend and Thank he's like okay. a father to us. He gives us what we need. And can you so respond to the can to, you respond to, to this question on the bottom? How may devotees be affected by Ajahara? Well, um the, the uh, we spoke about this some yesterday, but um you know, I, I guess the um, over endeavoring, let's see, um, eating too much or um, collecting too much. So, um, you know, I, I, the, 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 the tongue is very powerful, so we're affected in that way. And uh, sometimes we overeat and then it impacts us negatively in our ability to practice Krishna consciousness. The over collecting part, is um you know it's you know it's, it can be there you know where devotees just become so absorbed in making money that they just yeah i would think like their devotional service i would think sometimes so we, we just have to be close. sometimes we see devotees you know they have their home in the west and they have their apartment in vrindavan and they have another apartment in mayapur you know when you walk around the housing here in the Holy Dam, you, you find only a very small percentage of the houses are occupied. Often they're, they're sold, but nobody lives there. Very rare they live yeah. there. Look, is that, could we consider that as Ajahara, having, a, you know, when you have more apartments and you don't live there? Well, um, <laughs> at, least, at least they have an aspiration for <laughs> living in the Dam. I, you know, I mean, I just came from the largest Grahasta community in the Western world. You know, I spent like six years there. There's like over 1,200 devotees. But, um, they, uh, you know, we'll have uh, maybe at best 25 or 30 that come from Mongol RT, and um, maybe 15 to 20 come for Bhagavatam class. Why aren't more attending? Because they're too busy making money. Now, some of it, you know, is just, well, they've got to make ends meet, but I would say a good portion of it is Ayahara, you know, not, not, not observing that, you know, uh, avoiding Ayahara. So, yeah, I mean, 
I was over in the West and I kept a place here. I'm glad I didn't there because now I got a place to come to. So I think a lot of devotees are thinking along those lines that they've got a place that they can do Vanaprabhas, that they can retire in. Okay. And take shelter after the, all the hectic years, you know. Okay, so that's nice. Go in the West. But it's definitely a much more supportive environment. It's more much more supportive environment here for Krishna consciousness than what you find in the West. It's, constantly being deprogrammed by your environment <laughs> so it's not, the, the, the strength of the average devotee is not nearly what it is in the dam interesting yeah it's my experience what about sunday program how many people come there sunday program uh, uh you know maybe four or five hundred but not all of them are um, the devo you know, the initiated devotees, there's other, also guests. Um, four or five hundred in a, on a really good day, like three or four hundred on you know, maybe average. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are devotees that you never see. You know, maybe you see them in Janmastami or Vyasa Puja, and that's it. So it's um, Pancharatna, you mentioned him earlier in the class. He lived here for many years. He, he, he came here in 72. He was the first temple. Treasure, and uh, when his children came of age, he went to Alachua and lived there for oh, about eight years or so. And they needed their education. I mean, you know, they, they went into university, etc. <clears throat> and he estimated that about eighty-five percent of the devotees there were not chanting their rounds, or at least all of them. That was his uh, kind of estimate based upon his experience there. So I think it's probably true, and that you know they, they're just overwhelmed by the financial. Mm -hmm. well, can we have some comments so on this from yeah, other devotees? Avoid, some other devotees like to comment on this? Um, Ashutosh Prabhu would like to say something. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I just wanted to make a point. Maharaj, the eating aspect of Atyahara. Uh, we can deal with it by not accepting anything and everything in the name of vegetarian and only accepting bare minimum which is required for the maintenance of body uh, which was followed by the great devotees of Lord. So we can do that. How do, how do you do that? That's easy to say. How do you do it? By forming a habit that I will take a particular diet every day. Okay, but particular diet means, oh, I'm not going to take sweets, no more sweets or something. Yes, yes, my rice. Less rice. Yes. Some kind of restrictions. Okay. Anybody else like to comment on this topic? Okay, well, go ahead. You have Keshav Kishore would like to say something. Yes, Keshav Kishore Prabhu. Thank you. Um, I've been here in uh, my airport stock for the last day months. And uh, my airport is the place of birth of Lord Chaitanya. Supposedly, is the place, the most sacred place in our uh, the young tradition as is gone and I have seen that from the most mundane phenomena to the most sublime and uh, people might have in their bank accounts millions of dollars or just five hundred dollars the devotion depends more as uh, Condition from the soul and from the heart and from the individual, then, uh, then where we are or what we do is is our relationship with our personal relationship with Krishna, with God, that will make the difference in in ourselves. 
not as a collective. We live in the uh, collective of, of uh, 1,200 devotees that probably they're attending or not attending. I live in Chicago, in the temple in Chicago, and Hare Krishna. I think we lost him there. I should be sure. When, uh, sorry, it, it was a phone call that was coming in. When, when, uh, uh, when uh, our Guru Maharaj comes to the temple, it's 500 or, or 35 people that comes and attend uh, the regular activities because Maharaj is in town. So, so I don't know. Um, is my my point is that uh, is it's not what we learned, what we uh, practiced in uh, inside ourselves uh, as devotees. How how closer and how authentic and how genuine and and uh, how much we would like to be closer to God is, is my point. So 500 people come when Guru Maharaj comes here? Hare Krishna, Keshav Kishore. Oh, I think his audio must be, I um, cutting out quite a lot. There's, can we go to Amritesh Krishna Prabhu? He's also got his hand raised. Okay. Amritesh Krishna Prabhu? Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhananath Pana. Am I audible? Yes. You're audible, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, I, uh, because you have seen uh, the model is following since Prabhupada's time. So, I, I would like you to throw light on this because <laughs> I think there is something to uh, something to do with the model that is Islam is uh, following now, because that may be promoting this kind of lifestyle. Because uh, earlier uh, all the devotees are uh, dining in the temple, and there is no restaurant uh, uh, in every corner of the campus <laughs> where a whole day Mahabh uh, Sadams are available, and uh, so that is regarding eating more. And also, like earning outside and staying in a temple campus, is it, is it something to do with the model that is going was following before and following now? Maharaj, you can throw some light because you have seen the things right in the beginning. Well, obviously, nowadays we have a congregation. It's all congregation based. It's not ashram based. In Prabhupada's time, it was all ashram based. We all lived in the ashram. We were all full time devotees. We were all in our 20s and a few older people in their 30s. It was a little diff quite different from how it is today. Even, you know, in Prabhupada's time, even you were married, still you would live in the ashram. You live full time, on, uh, you're working for the temple, doing service for the temple. But nowadays, it, it's quite different. You know, people come here to Mayapur, they may, they may be initiated, but they're probably most of them, are, they're, they're not living in the temple. The number of people living in the ashrams nowadays is very much less. And so they come to the temple, they come to Mayapur, and they, yeah, they enjoy eating out, because that's, that's their lifestyle, that's how they are. The brahmacharis, you know, the people who live in the temple, you know, and certainly when we would come to Mayapur in Prabhupada's time, there was no Govindas. There were none of these things. There were none of these Mahaprasadam stalls or anything. Everybody just took prasadam together. But today, you know, you have... So the Atyara was naturally controlled at that time. And now, because the system is being different. Yeah, time and circumstance, you know, they have to generate, they find ways to generate incomes for the temple also. So sale of prasadam was 
provides quite a big income for the temple here in Mayapur. And they do produce quite a bit of prasadam. People come, people so, like... Maharaj, what is, yeah? what is Jivish's strategy for uh, taking spiritual care of people uh, who are uh, part of a congregation and they're... Uh, although they're part of the community, but uh, their spiritual standard, they're not, not accountable to report to the temple authority for the spiritual standard. What is Jivish's approach for this Maharaj? Well, we have to recognize, as you say, you know, that the, they can't, you can't expect them to live on the standards which the people living in the temple all follow, you know, people like sannyasis and brahmacharis, you know, people living outside, working people, you know, they have to have their independence, they have to have some, their freedom. So they come to Mayapur, yeah, encourage them that so long as they eat things purchased in here, inside the if it's prasadam, very good, we're happy. We can't expect them all to sit down in the Gada Bhavan and take prasadam or in the Sulab Bhavan, Sulab Pavilion there and take prasadam there. You know, they like to have... I'm more concerned, I'm more concerned about uh, following monthly programs or uh, chanting their own. So if, uh, if, the, if, we, if we are seeing a big percentage of people are uh, slacking in their sadhana. So, uh, is there any strategy from the GBC side to uh, address to this issue? Right. Well, you have to see how much they're willing to cooperate, how much are they willing to hear. If, as Jan Mastami Prabhu okay. says, if they're not coming to temple, they're not very eager to hear. Some, if, if somehow, you see, before you can instruct people, they have to be willing to take instruction. They have to accept you as a teacher and be willing to hear from you. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. They have to be willing, they have to be receptive. If you just simply talk to them and chastise them like that, you know, the, they'll say, who are you? You're not my guru. You're, you know. They'll say, yeah, I've got other things to do. Before, maybe when they were young, they were serious about Krishna consciousness. Uh, one uh, Russian devotee was telling me, I think oh, he, they were saying they did some survey of the Russian devotees, say the average lifespan of a devotee in Russia is about six to eight years. That they come to Krishna consciousness, the majority of people will stay somewhere between six to eight years. And then by that time, they're, you know, they've had enough. They go away, they give up. And so if you get six or eight, six to eight years service out of someone, it's not bad, it's better than nothing. I'm sure the other temples also have the same problem. Keeping people active in Krishna consciousness is not easy. Okay? Yes, Maharaj. I'm... <laughs> Uh, it's it's okay in the sense uh, because uh, we see that deterioration in the <laughs> level of uh, as the college way is progressing. Well, Prabhupada also Srila Prabhupada also understood. He understood, you know, it's things. It's not going to always be the same. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, even if everything else falls apart, he said at least at least three temples should continue: Mayapur, Vrindavan, and Juhu. <laughs> that was Prabhupada's will, you know, at least these three temples, they have to remain, they have to continue. Other things, they may fall apart, we don't know. Prabhupada understood, you know, it's not always going to be the way it was in Prabhupada's time, with so many young people coming and a lot of energy and enthusiasm. You know, times change. It's a different mood. But still, Krishna consciousness is going on. There's a lot of preaching going on. There's nice temples, the deities are being worshipped. There's a lot of good things. More people means more problems. <laughs> and the problem is keeping up spiritual standards. It's not easy. Okay? Yes, Maharaj. 
Yes, Maharaj. Please uh, bless us so that we can continue. This is where, uh, when we hear this, uh, this uh, statement like, average life span of a devotee is 7-8 years, it is very disheartening. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yes, well, you. this is the hard facts of life, Prabhu. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Maharaj, Chen Master Prabhu would like to say something. Okay. Chen Master Prabhu. Before the Bhakti Vedanta Veda base was um, released, um, dear Krishna Maharaj, there was a preliminary, it looks like a I don't know what you call it in IT language, but um, he did research on all the letters that um, Prabhupada sent to the GBC, and and he um, determined that the, the, the highest priority that the GBC had was to establish strong spiritual standards in the temples. So, you know, I, I know my own personal experience, I took over the Denver temple uh, shortly after the Zonal Acharya had fallen down. And most of the devotees in the temple were the disciples of this, and they were all discouraged, and most of them didn't attend the program. So what I found, you know, and I, I think this is a, a principle that Prabhupada, you know, with the letters that he wrote to the GBC, he wanted them on a high standard, and he wanted them um, by leadership, by the example. You know, so I just went, regardless of what was going on in my life, to every aspect of the morning program, and just stayed in the temple room during Japa, and, encourage others to do it and then eventually it came to that point where everyone could um, um, was able to uh, hold out was able to uh, you know we had a really strong morning program attendance so I think it's you know a lot of you know turning this downward spiral around has to do with the leadership making a deep commitment themselves to do that I'm not going to criticize but you know, that if the leaders are very present in the morning program, then the followers will naturally want to come. <laughs> they'll, they'll be inspired like that. So that's a, that's a principle that, you know, not, not just in the um, spiritual realm, but in uh, the material realm, you know, of leadership. You know, it's, it's leading by example. And Prabhupada very much stressed this point. So anyway, it's just some thoughts on my side. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Very relevant. Very much appreciated. We agree. Leadership, the, lo the role of the leaders, very important to have their presence. Okay, we want to go ahead. Prabhu, Krishna Keshava Prabhu, are you there? Yes, Lord. Can we have the next slide? Could you go ahead? Does it come up? It's on my screen. Okay. Thank you. Avoiding Ajahara. Someone like to read this for us? Someone who hasn't read yet? Lalita Mataji, are you there? Oh, Lalita Mataji is sick today. Asa Prabhu would like to read. Okay. Asa Prabhu, please carry on. You're on mute, Asa Prabhu. Yeah, sorry, I didn't hear you for a moment. Okay. Uh, avoiding Atihara. Nasaktasya Vishayan. When one is not attached to anything but at the same time accepts anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated about possessedness. A Brahmana who is satisfied with whatever is providentially obtained is increasingly enlightened with spiritual power. But the spiritual potency of a dissatisfied Brahmana decreases as fire diminishes in, in potency when water is sprinkled on it. Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam 8.19.26 Would you like to comment on this Prabhu? Um, I'll need to, to think a minute about it if I may. Right. Okay. I'll say something first, that in the re relation to the first verse, Rupa Goswami, very famous verse, we often hear the second part, Nirbanda Krishna Sambandi Yukta Vairagi Ujjati. 
actual renunciation for the devotee is to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. We don't have to give up something if we can use it in Krishna's service. So we shouldn't be attached to anything, but at the same time we should be able to use it in Krishna's service. And then the Brahmana is described in the second part, satisfied Brahmana. Qualification of a Brahmana, they should be satisfied. The qualification of the mode of goodness, one in the mode of goodness, is that they're satisfied with whatever is provided by the will, by the arrangement of providence. We may be rich, we may be poor, we may be working hard, we may be having great struggles, but oh, we're sad, this is Krishna's plan, he's got me working like this, we accept it. So, Brahmana should be satisfied. Sometimes, you, you know, the Brahmana has Many children, something that doesn't have any children. Brahmana is satisfied anyway. This is Krishna's plan. Brahmana has a nice house. Brahmana doesn't have a house. Lives in the street. Okay. We, we're not worried about it. Whatever is arranged by the will of providence, go on with service. So as devotees, we also want to be satisfied trying to be satisfied with whatever service is given to us. Asato, Prabhu, you like to say something now? Uh, yes. Um, the, the principle is, is clear. My, my, personal, um, my personal thought is that this takes um, uh, contemplation and meditation, this kind of attitude because uh, we do so many things every day we do different things and to to see everything in uh, relation and, and dovetailing into Krishna I think this takes some um, continuous meditation and practice so as a goal as a goal it's a um, it's, uh, it's great but uh, Personally, I think this, this will take some years to perfect. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Yeah, we understand, we're practicing. Prabhupada often said, to be, a, to be a Vaishnava is not an easy thing. We're practicing, we're trying to become Vaishnavas. So, this is the state, sadhana bhakti, devotional service in practice. So we, we just want to keep practicing gradually, gradually, it becomes clearer, becomes more relevant, more meaningful. Can we go ahead, Krishna Keshav? Of course. Okay, someone, someone can read, please, who has not read? Please. Uh, four kinds of blasphemy to a Vaishnava. First, to blaspheme a Vaishnava for his or her apparent low birth or caste. Second, to blaspheme a Vaishnava for previous sinful activities prior to one surrender to Lord Krishna. Third, to blaspheme a Vaishnava for some unpremeditated accidental fall down. Fourth, to blaspheme a Vaishnava for the last traces of his or her previous sins or faults that are almost rectified. Can you give some examples of blasphemy of a Vaishnava, Maharaji, from the scripture? Do you know any examples in the scripture? Devotees who were committed Vaishnava Aparad? That was Haladalila Prabhu. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. Would you like a blasphemy? We see that uh, like Gopal Chapal blasphemed uh, Shivaj Sacharya and then he got some disease. Okay. How did he blaspheme? What did he do? 
लाइक दे वर ऑल लाइक शिवा इन शिवा शंकर लॉर्ड चित्र महाप्रभु एंड ऑल इज एसोसिएट्स दे वर डांसिंग ऑल नाइट बट गोपाल चपल वाज एनवियस एंड सो ही अरेंज्ड सम पैराफेरनलिया ऑफ दुर्गा पूजा एंड केप्ट इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिज आंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिज होम सो इन द मॉर्निंग पीपल जस्ट शिवा शचरिया दैट डे ही वाज डूइंग गुड दुर्गा पूजा सो शिवा शचरे बीइंग हंबल डिडंट डिफेंड but the but lord chandra mahapur was very uh, angry and so gopal chapal like uh, got some disease okay thank you prabhu yeah yeah we are often told we must be very careful not to offend the vaishnavas someone else can give an example blaspheming vaishnava blaspheme Sundar Keshav. Hi Krishna, guys. Hi Krishna. Uh, I think I think the uh, uh, Suruchi had been blasphemed through my other Dharma, and because Dharma is not very elevated uh, spiritual point of view, because the main point he was not actually elevated, but after some times, uh, as he become elevated, he got. Your devotee, so Suruchi, uh, also actually burned the fire uh, with her with her shirt. Um, I listen to this. Story. Okay, so that would be the first case here. I see, but last time. That would be A here. Yeah. The, the Suruchi, she condemned Druva. You're not born from my womb, so you have like low birth. <laughs> you're not born from my womb so you cannot sit on your father's lap so she was criticizing him because of his birth okay now uh, people are uh, criticizing uh, narottam das thakur because he was kaiyas and that was a uh, that is the first case of vishnu aparad okay narottam das thakur he was not born in a vaishnava a brahmana family So they said you shouldn't be initiating people. He was also initiating brahmanas. So it was an issue. They criticized. They said, "How you can initiate people? You're not a brahman. How you can it be the guru of a brahman, a brahmanas?" So on the basis of birth, they criticized him. any other examples b what about b blaspheme vaishnava for previous sinful activities prior to one surrender to lord krishna can you think of an example I was thinking maybe when Jaga and Madhai became devotees, you know, after they offended Lord Nityananda, but Lord Nityananda forgave them and they, they brought, he brought them to be devotees. Then some of the Vaishnavas, some people were not very happy. They thought, "Oh no, you know, these people are very sinful. You know, they they've done a, a, so many bad things, but they've come to surrender to Krishna." so we cannot condemn someone on account of their previous sinful activities you have kashyap sharma sundar right yes kashyap sharma sundar uh, yes brahmana uh, some some of the gaudiya devotees criticize prabhupad also for giving initiation to uh, westerner devotees Uh, they criticized Pra Prabhupada. They said Prabhupada is initiating people, making them brahmanas, and giving them even sannyas, and they're coming from Malacca family, right? So on the basis yes. of on the basis of birth, they were criticizing. Okay. 
also sometime uh, it, i have heard that uh, they are saying that prabhupad is not from brahmana background that prabhupad is like vaishya background like that some of them are saying yeah they are considering prabhupad's seminal birth that Prabhupada was born in a family, it's not a Brahmana family, but they were a pious Hindu family, not a Brahmana family. Prabhupada's name was uh, Abhay Charan De. So they're not Brahmins by birth, not Jati Brahmins, but by second birth he was Brahman. Took initiation. So these people, they have the bodily concept. So they, are, they, commit, they blaspheme the devotees. Many examples of blasphemy of a devotee, just like Subari Muni blasphemed, he blasphemed, Subari Muni blasphemed Garuda, and Durvasha Muni tried to blaspheme Maharaj Ambarish. Yes? Haridas Thakur, Haridas Thakur was blasphemed because of he was born in Lechka family. Yes. Okay. So, what, what offense is that? Is that C? Unpremeditated, unpremeditated accidental fall down, maybe? <laughs> Mother Sachi. No, Mother, I think it doesn't. Yes. Mother said she, could, she didn't actually say anything, but in her mind she was thinking, it's Advaita Acharya. <laughs> he, he influenced Vishwarup to take sannyas. Okay, we'll go ahead, Prabhu. Thank you. Niya Magraha. Someone read? Uh, may I read Maharaji? Please. Niyamagra. Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles. Niyamagra. Practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Okay. So, ni, ni, Niyam Agraha, Niyam, the rules and regulations. Can you give some example of people being too much attached to rules and regulations? Do you have any experience of this in your own Krishna consciousness? Or can you think of anything? Mm, yes, Maharaji. Like, what little experience I have. Like, recent we saw that there was a Surya Grahan. So, although we find from the different, uh, some of the Acharya's commentary also and from Prabhupada's fasting also, that as far as ISKCON is concerned, there are not much consideration of deity worship during um, Surya Grihan. Uh, also, I've heard that even once Prabhupada Ji said that in Vrindavan temple, you can close the altar and keep on doing the deity worship from inside. But sometimes we find in the devotee community, there are a lot more discussions about this, that oh, we should be touching, we should not be touching, we should be following this, that. And some something is necessary, but sometimes it goes beyond the limit. And it's completely like a karma kant thing. So that is like uh, too much attached to the rules and regulations, not thinking about the spiritual advancement. And uh, neglecting the rules also we can find sometimes, uh, like, um, like sometimes what happens, this uh, fasting of appearances and disappearances of different acharyas come. So sometimes, um, although that is for our benefit, Prabhupada Ji also says in different purports that we should keep fast, uh, it will increase the austerity level. So, but many times we can see that we neglect sometimes the, the fasting of different appearances and disappearance day. So it is sort of whimsical attitude and just neglecting the rules and regulations. So this I have little experience, Prabhupada Thank you very much, very nice. Yeah, Prabhu was pointing out about the solar eclipse recently. Uh, one devotee was saying that uh, Shruti Kirti was Prabhupada's servant and he travelled with Prabhupada. And when there would be an eclipse, Prabhupada would not change anything. He kept his own schedule. He kept the same schedule. 
He didn't worry about it. Of course, Prabhupada, being the topmost Paramahamsa, he can do like that. He's above all rules and regulations. We, we're not so much transcendentally situated. But certainly Prabhupada did say for the, the deity worship, it could go on, just close the curtains. Okay, any other examples about too much, prop, too much attachment for the rules and regulations? The mo main problem is too much neglect of the rules and regulations, right? That's the big issue. People neglect the rules and regulations. They think, oh, four principles is too much. If it's just only three, it's okay. Oh, 16 rounds, too much. It should only be four rounds or something. <laughs> People want to minimize the rules and regulations. Okay, how did Prabhupada adjust some rules and regulations? You must have studied this in Nectar of Devotion. Prabhupada certainly made a number of adjustments in the rules and regulations. We make a distinction between the principle and the details, right? So adjusting details, Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and at the same time maintaining principles. So, principle, would someone like to give an example about what's the principle and what would be the detail? Maharaji? Let's hear from the ladies. We'll hear the ladies first, give them a chance to speak. Adjusting detail, maintaining principle, can you give an example of principle and a detail? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. What's your good name? Uh, Maharaj. Shweta Maharaj. Okay, Shweta. I can give a very simple example like we do in the um, of my uh, experience in our study. Um, as a medical student, um, we are given a set of principles that we are supposed to follow. So the basic simple principle of um, sepsis, which means prevention against any kind of infection. So we do the basic um, hand washing to any kind of procedure that we do. The principle behind this prevention of infection, cough infection, the basic principle. But according to the time, situation, there is manipulation, but the principle remains unchanged. Like for example, you're working in a rural area where you don't get the facility for um, preventing your, um, like uses of um, sterile gloves, so you might use a clean glove, but still uh, the principle remains unchanged, but uh, there might be manipulation in certain details, but the main principle will remain unchanged. Okay, so in, in your medical experience, you, you're working as a, a, a nurse or something? Do you have a job in the medical field? Uh, Maharaj, I used to work, but uh, I, I'm not working anymore. You're not working anymore now. Okay. Yes. So certainly, you know, how, how they practice uh, the facilities would be very different in the hospital and when you go into a rural area in the countryside or in the mountains or something, maybe you're working with tribals or aborigines. And, and so very different facilities, you have to adjust everything. So the details would vary. But the principle of cleanliness is still there. Can we have a Krishna conscious example? And how do we apply it? What principles are there and what's the details in Krishna in our Krishna conscious program? Janma, somebody wants Sarvish. to speak? Yeah? Sarveshwar Prabhu? Sarveshwar, huh? Yes, I think it's not So the principle is a thing which uh, should not be changed. But uh, details, uh, is, it, it can be changed according to time, place, and circumstance. So, like, uh, for example, uh, like chanting 64 rounds. Uh, actually, Bhaktivedanta Saswati Maharaj, um, uh, he said, uh, we have to chant 64 rounds otherwise. 
but uh, Prabhupada didn't change the principle, the chanting. So he adjusted it to 16 rounds actually, according to modern time, place, and circumstance. And as the woman in the DT was she, so in Israel in Western countries, there are no, uh, no, 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 uh, ocean actually, it was one of the principles. Uh -huh. uh, but Prabhupada crossed the ocean. He went to Western countries to preach actually to give this uh, message of Lord Chaitanya. So he adjusted. And also, Sanyasa should not perform marriages, but he performed uh, uh, marriages in the Western countries because they were very freely associated with the uh, women. So, so he made them cross us uh, to make them Krishna conscious. And also, uh, Ekadasi is on Ekadasi is fasting. So instead of complete fasting, because uh, they are not fasting, the rules are not rules in teaching or anything. So they are like, I guess they cannot fast, they can take some prashtadam without grains. Okay. And also, uh, like initiation, initiating disciples on behalf of Prabhupada, in case of emergencies where Prabhupada cannot go, he allowed some of his disciples to do initiations on behalf of him. Okay. And also, the small thing is like chanting with the chapels, actually. Uh, usually, in Indian tradition, we should, we should chant, uh, or we should not chant with chapels. But Prabhupada alone, they can chant by walking with chapels and everything. Okay. Some of the examples. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. A lot of examples there. Very good. Uh, I'd like to bring up one example. I was just reading Shamsundar's book about chasing rhinos with the Swami and uh, in, in the book he talks about how when they had the groundbreaking ceremony here in Mayapur for the for the uh, what's now the temple of the Vedic planetarium you know they were doing the laying the foundation stone and it was a big program and many of Prabhupada's god brothers all came and there were many sannyasis there <laughs> So Shyam Sundar Prabhu is describing, and he talks, he said, Prabhupada, first person Prabhupada asked to speak, he said, Malati, you speak. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. You know, so many sannyasis are there, and so many Prabhupada's god-brothers are there, you know, very senior Vaishnavas, sannyasis also, of course. And, and who does Prabhupada ask to speak? This young American woman. You know, it's against all standards, you know, we, it's just amazing, you know. To these were all, what, Malati? So Malati, of course she'd spoken before, she was used to speaking, and, and so she got up and she spoke. And she spoke about Prabhupada. She, that's what she liked to speak about. She's completely sold out to Prabhupada. <laughs> so like this. So uh, Prabhupada had his own ways of adjusting principles. He didn't worry much about men or women, give women also the chance. But that was criticized by some people. They certainly didn't like it. Okay, so... Adjusting the principles. Uh, can we go? Can, can we just see that next slide, Krishna Keshava Prabhu? Are you still here? Are you, st are you going or what? Um, I, I was just going to say after the break I will go and then I'll hand over to Annie with the Oh, break. we should have a break, oh, right? Oh yeah, now it's time for the break, right? No, <laughs> we better. Sorry. Break. Do you want to stop for? We we'll stop for break now. Yeah, we better. It's a good place to break now. Yeah, let's break. We'll okay. come. We'll come right, back. So I'm going to hand over the the. I'm going to make Anirudha Prabhu now the host, so he will take over because I have to go to the meeting we spoke about. Okay. Ago. Go ahead. So thank you so much. Thank Everybody, you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
So we take a break, Prabhus, for Gayatri, Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this is Anirudh Prabhu. Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can we go ahead, Prabhu? Could you move to the next slide? Sure, Maharaj. Okay, so uh, this, uh, this is quite a long text there. Uh, it's dealing with the pastime of Lord Chaitanya's servant Govinda and how he came to give, give Lord Chaitanya massage. Maybe you can go to the next slide also, Prabhu. Yeah. So from Anjali Leela, Govinda wants to give Lord Chaitanya massage. So he had to step over Lord Chaitanya's body. So he stepped over the body of Lord Chaitanya, gave him a massage. He didn't go away after he gave the massage. So Lord Chaitanya was surprised and he asked him, why are you still here? He said, well, I didn't want to step over you. But he said, well, you stepped over me when you came in. But Govinda said, well, that was for service. For service I could step over you. But to just go away, just for my own, after I finished the service, I didn't think that was right. So Lord Chaitanya very much appreciated that, how Govinda had properly applied the etiquette, right? The etiquette is that for service you may have to break some minor principle to do some, but for the purpose of devotional service then it's allowed. So. Described there. These are some of the finer points of etiquette in devotional service. Only one who has received the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can understand these principles. The Lord is very interested in manifesting the exalted qualities of the devotees. And that is why they engineered this incident. Go ahead, Prabhu. All right. Someone can read this for us? Transgressing a lesser rule for a higher rule. From the character of Govinda, it is to be learned that we may sometimes commit offences for the service of the Lord, but not for sense gratification. Shri Prabhupada, Chaitanya Chaitanya, Antilila, Chapter 10. All right, someone read. Go ahead, the person who read that last one, you can read this one also. Niyam Agraha, Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles. All the great Acharyas or religious preachers or reformers of the world executed their mission by the adjustment of religious principles in terms of time and place. There are different climates and situations in different parts of the world. And if one has to discharge his duties to preach the message of the Lord, he must be expert in adjusting things in terms of the time and place. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.9.9 per word. Okay. Someone else read this one? Yamagraha Prabhu's notes. Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles. So a brahmachari is strictly prohibited to see even a young woman. But what can be done? In the Western countries, the boys and girls, they mix very freely. And if I say, my dear boys, you cannot see even a young girl, then finished. My business is Therefore, after a according to the country, going to circumstances, Okay, your voice is breaking there, Mariji. Can you go ahead and read this one also, Mariji? So we have to adopt Desha Kalapatra according to time, but we are keeping our principles as it is, but making arrangements according to the circumstances that is required. Shimana, 
Are you a married woman yourself? Sorry, Maharaj. Are you are you a married woman? No, I'm not married. You're Maharaj. Not, okay, you're a single woman. So can you tell us have, have you yes. have you had how have you how, which country are you from originally? Uh, I am from France. Okay. So you're from Europe. So people in Europe yes. people in Europe generally they mix freely young men and young women. Yes. So did you find it very difficult coming to Krishna consciousness? Um I found that it really differs from temple to temple that the mood and the um, regulations are can be different uh, in different temples. So in temples where it is very very strict um yeah at the beginning it's it's it is very difficult because i was not grown like that in what way was it strict can you tell us in what way it was strict there are some temples uh, which forbid any interaction even for service uh, so it, it can be uh, difficult at men, the beginning. Young, young men, men and women are not allowed to interact. They're not allowed to meet, to speak, to speak to each other, or. So. How do you find it in India? Um, my my friends are women, and I most of my yeah most of my friends are women, so I don't find it difficult here. I see. You don't have any problem being in India, being in Mayapur. Here in Mayapur, for example, they don't have a woman's ashram. No. In France, did they have a woman's ashram? Yes, in France they have temple. Uh, they have uh, New Mayapur. There is ashram for man and ashram for woman. Okay. But they're quite strict, is it? Mm, not there. Not, uh, all the temples are not as all as strict. Uh, I have been to other. I've been to different temples, and some temples you can. Uh, you can talk, you can talk, you can uh, briefly talk or you can interact for service. But yeah, so it's more natural or more familiar. But you found this a little difficult in the beginning when you first came to Krishna consciousness. Uh, yes. Now you're more adjusted to it. Yes, but I prefer the temples that are not too strict and that are more um, personal and trying to applying the rules and regulation, of course, but trying to be um, to pay attention to the needs of the people more than to just apply the rules without uh, trying to figure out what, I, what can be good for uh, the well-being of others. Okay. Yes, young, certainly young women, they have to be taken care of nicely, they have to be looked after, their needs have to be understood. It's not easy sometimes having young ladies live together in an ashram, and trying to keep 
the standards would any of the men like to say anything about this Janmashtami Prabhu as a temple president previously did you have problems with the men and women ashram Maharaj, I didn't understand what Mataji is telling when, it's, when she says it is difficult means it is uh, when, the, when the interaction is not there it is difficult or when there is interaction then that is difficult. Maharaji? I didn't understand that. Uh, Prabhu I was saying that when I came at the beginning to Krishna consciousness because I was, it was not the way I was raised and I'm not that young, I'm not, I mean, I'm not in my 15 or 20s, so it was a bit difficult for me, uh, especially if the temples are very, very, very strict, because all temples are not so strict. Uh, but now I understand, I understand it's good, and it's good uh, especially to protect uh, women, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, okay, I understood. You know, some ladies, they don't like being called Matajis. Do you have any difficulty with that? How do people address you usually? Do they say Mataji or do they say, how do they call you? Uh, are you are you talking to me, Maharaj? Yes, I want to know from you, what, how do you find it? You know, when other men address you as Mataji or mother and like that, you know. Do you, do you have any problem with this? Mm, I don't have problem. Okay, that's good. I know, some, sometimes young women, they don't like being called mother <laughs> for some reason, you know. They don't like being given that kind of title. Okay, so Prabhupada certainly gave women the opportunity to become devotees and to take part in Krishna consciousness. And they do a lot of service, we have to admit, they do very, make a very valuable contribution to the Krishna consciousness movement. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone like to read? Another person? Bhakta Emmanuel. Niyama Garaha. Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details of the maintaining principles. A preacher must strictly follow rules and regulations laid down in the Shastras, yet at the same time devise a means by which the preaching work to reclaim the fallen may go on with full force. What was Srila Prabhupada's mood in adjusting details and maintaining principles in relation to Niyama Graha? Okay, would you like to answer that Prabhu? What was Srila Prabhupada's mood? to have good progression in Krishna consciousness. So it was for the for the fallen to grow up. His models for everyone to be able to be engaged in the service without um, without uh, breaking the going against the shastras. Yes. Okay, that's fine. His mood was the Make as ma allow as many people as possible to come into Krishna consciousness and at the same time keep the principle of the Shastra. Okay, fine. Go ahead. And we'll see some examples Srila Prabhupada made. I think previous speaker already mentioned many of these things. Anyway, someone can read.
ये सुंदर के शब्द करोगे राकेश बट एडजस्टमेंट्स द रिटेल्स इट सीन प्रोपाद मेक्स सीन प्रोपाद क्रश्ड द ओशियन ए सन्यासी इज फॉरबिडन टू डू अलाउड वुमेन टू लिव एज इन मैचरिटी इन द टाइम पेस एंड हर्ड ऑफ इन अ वैदिक कल्चर कंडक्टेड विवाह यज्ञ एक्सेप्टेड गुरु पूजा इन द फ्रंट ऑफ द डीटीज फॉरबिडन इन सास Sent devotee sent devotee on a book distribution in uh, karmi cloth accepted the titles propas much to his god but the rest Go ahead, Prabhu. Read this a little more. But principle, but principle says uh, this in the Prabhupada mention. If you ever get money, print books. Don't use money for sense gratification. Regulatory principle: no illicit theft, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, and no gambling. Only devotees who are serious about spiritual advancement in Krishna consciousness should be allowed to stay in our temple. No ladies or gays once should accept this which you must. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is not very important. Uh, I have little questions. So can I ask now? Okay. Okay. Man, as per. Uh, the tales and principles will be seen in all these scriptures. Mm. But uh, as in our school, our present days, there is a principle or we can say it is part is that the women they should go. Yeah, we know this. The tales discussion is going on in our school, but we haven't seen in Shastra or in any other sampradaya anywhere else. And Prabhupad not tells us about it. The Prabhupad may Prabhupad give the Brahman initiation to women, but Prabhupad didn't get the give the thread to women. No. But just the symptoms is uh, coming on now, and so many Prabhupad disciples uh, they are also just wanted to add the student. So at the they are also in a spiritual master's position. So how what mood I should No, develop uh, regarding them, and because as per they are our very very senior as a spiritual master, at the same time they makes uh, something which is not recommended by Shastra and other the Shastra. So what should it should we should be considered about them? Would someone like to take up the answer to this question? Could could you repeat the question? It was difficult to hear. Should I repeat? Well, well maybe Maharaj. Uh, uh, okay. You know, sometimes your accent's difficult. So he's asking about <laughs> about the position of women. That you know that the 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 what should our attitude be towards them in relation to. them taking up responsible positions you know nowadays we have women gbc and we have women temple presidents and there may even very soon be women gurus initiating certainly there's a lot of support for women initiating so how should what should our mood be towards women like that taking senior roles Is it like that, Prabhu? Yeah, that's true. Because Prabhu is saying when uh, conversation, maybe conversation. Prabhu says if any brahmanas 
If it's a Brahman, if he's taking a position of Kshatriya, he will not be maintained to a Kshatriya's position because he has not an inherent character like a Kshatriya. Or when any Kshatriya just is opposing, is opposing the uh, post of a Brahman, so just uh, so he's a so-called Brahman, it's not actually inherent Brahman. So thus, only we create the disturbances. Mm. Oh, so Prabhu, Prabhu's question is more about the brahmanas. Who is actually qualified to be a brahmana? <laughs> and the opposition from the kshatriyas. <laughs> what should be our mood about these people who are taking the position of brahmanas, but they're more kshatriyas? Or the character is more in the mood of the Kshatriya than the Brahmana. How to relate to them? We have to understand that we're not practicing Varnashram, Dharma. Although we have Brahman initiation, we're not strictly following the principles of Varnashram, Dharma. We do practice Daivi Varnashram. No, sometimes for the sake of managing, managerial positions, these devotees have to be, you know, big leaders, they have to organize things, they have to be like a Kshatriya. They're, they're just doing it as a service to Krishna. Just like, who was it? Parasuram. Parasuram was a Brahmana, but he became a Kshatriya. Right? And Vishwamitra was a Kshatriya, he became a Brahman. So uh, according to the time and place and circumstance, we have to see everyone as a servant of Krishna. We have to appreciate someone taking on a responsibility for the service of Krishna. We don't classify anyone as a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Brahman or a Sudra. We see everyone as servant of Krishna. Prabhupada was asked, we don't label people. Brahman, Vaishya, Shatra, everyone is devotee, that's Krishna Consciousness. So we want to see everyone like that, Krishna Conscious light. Anirudh Prabhu, you can go ahead, put on the next slide. Ma, Martha, regarding the second question, regarding Diksha Guru, as a, so many devotees just they are Diksha Guru as, as what devotee? Uh, this Bhima and Diksha Guru, just so many devotees, the Prabhupada disciples, they are also you know, uh, supporting to them. So, but any Sastra, any Acharya, they don't tell any things about it. Any Sastra also. Don't tell any things about what? Women Diksha Guru, just women. Oh, women, women Diksha Guru. Women, Diksha Guru. There are so many other Sampatas also. Yeah. Well, we do so know. What, our attitude should be. What should be our attitude to it? Well, we have to see the spiritual. Perhaps this, uh, as uh, others, uh, our spiritual master, which uh, is Sri Prabhupada disciple, we are very elevated and sannyasis also. So, at the same time, they are not considering, I think they are not considering this last as well. So, what should be attitude towards them? Okay, any of the devotees like to respond? What's your attitude towards women Diksha Gurus? Prabhu said it's not in the Shastra. Maharaj, can I reply on that? Okay. Okay, uh, so in my opinion, this decision was taken by GBC. So, uh, see, uh, personally, uh, I'm not qualified, uh, you know, and uh, the proof is I'm doing Bhakti Shastri to start on qual qualification process. So there is no way that we can raise questions on decision of GBC. And apart than this, uh, you know, Atma uh, doesn't have any gender. So uh, uh, this is uh, this is bodily conception, male and female. And we can also see that in our class, uh, we have so many Matajis who are studying neck to neck, uh, God have graced them with a very in intellectual brain and they're studying, uh, in my opinion, which is really very good. 
because imagine after some time, uh, the, uh, after some time, they're gonna raise family, and they're gonna raise because the Prabhu would be busy in preaching, and the Mataji will be uh, Mataji will be busy in raising those child. You know, she will give an early start, and uh, in the beginning of class, you uh, mentioned about Pancharatna Prabhu. So by chance, I have this good pleasure of associating with Atita Guna Mataji, and she's a wonderful mother. And uh, I'm not saying that she, uh, she's going to be a Diksha Guru, but what I'm trying to say that she uh, she keeps reading on Bhagavad Gita every then and now. I, uh, you know, this is, uh, I think she told me the other day that this is her 17th or 18th read of Bhagavad Gita. And on she has passed on the same knowledge to her kids, where Pancharatma Prabhu is, uh, is a very busy Prabhu. He's always involved in his corn welfare activities. So uh, so what I would like to uh, conclude that uh, it's a fair technical opportunity and uh, about uh, women Diksha Guru being Shastra injection or not, because if it will be uh, Diksha Guru, they're gonna initiate people who are outside his corn now. They're not gonna initiate already being initiated. So, and people who are already outside his corn, uh, it, it's not that they are uh, at a transgender level. They, they need somebody, right? So they're going to help people who are outside the ISKCON. Uh, so uh, th there is uh, no conflict. And again, the study of Bhagavad Gita and all this course, you know, uh, there's one point which uh, comes again again. We have to become the era. Right? We do not have to become educated. You know, we have to focus on serving Krishna and Prabhupada. And what I have, whatever happens in ISKCON is uh, ultimately will of Prabhupada. So, uh, if this decision, this bill is passed, so that is with due consent of Srila Prabhupada and, and through his disciples. That's that's what I wanted to say. And we have Carlos Prabhu, who has raised his, his hand. Uh, do you want me? To, uh, do you want to hear from him? Mark? Yes. Yes. Let's hear from Carlos. Carlos Prabhu, you can unmute yourself. Uh, this is kind of a tricky question because um, I truly believe in the uh, quality of women in, in many aspects. Nowadays, women are uh, fighting uh, through feminism and some uh, fortunate positions, some other ones that are unfortunate. Um, I do believe that women have to have a much more preponderant uh, role in ISKCON. But Prabhupada, uh, for all what I have read throughout all this uh, uh, situation, uh, trace some guidelines in which uh, women were not considered appropriate for uh, uh, being Diksha Gurus. Um, if we accept that having Diksha Gurus um, is going to be a complicated thing because Prabhupada's mission and vision uh, is going to be blurred with the time, is going to be absolutely um, shattered with the time because if we permit that, it's going to be permitted in some other aspects if Prabhupada trace those guidelines. Am I clear? Yes, I think so, Prabhu. Okay, Maharaj, we've got three more hands raised. Uh, so, uh, as I see, there are seven more slides left. So uh, th th this, to, uh, is this is an important point. This is an important point. I would like to hear what sure. the other people have to say. Okay, so we have Kesham Shamsundar Prabhu. Kesham Shamsundar Prabhu, you can unmute yourself. Uh, as, uh, I want to just say that uh, whatever the situation uh, before uh, Prabhupada left from this world, I think it is not too much uh, bad than now. In, in foreign countries, it was uh, all these things what 
which is coming to India, the feminism and equal rights and all these things, it was there before. And Prabhupada has so many interviews also in which Prabhupada clearly mentioned the things, how women should uh, behave. So, uh, a part of all that instructions, if we do the things whimsically, then it will, uh, it will very big uh, uh, hurdles in the of our movement. Because Prabhupada, 12 years he spent and throughout the globe he moved for 14 times and gave lectures and all these things. So if it is there that uh, female also can be leader and in on managerial position, then Prabhupada has allotted them. And at that time, there was a crisis. There was no disciple or no leaders at that time. But still Prabhupada has not shown such an example. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Prabhu. Let's go. I want to hear the other people. We have to move as quickly as we can. I thank you for your yeah, point. So many things that we can, uh, we can at least have some sastric reactions. Otherwise, dreams cannot be. Well, uh, certainly, yes, certainly, it's all been decided by Shastra. They're certainly not making a whimsical decision. Discussion has been going on for a long time, and it's all a lot of Shastric evidence and so on. So, thank you. Let somebody else like to say something. We have Bhakta Emmanuel, then Amritesh Prabhu, and then Arpit Prabhu. Okay, please be brief. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so, uh, as for me, what I think about the attitude of, uh, of, of our attitude toward these uh, the female uh, dikshas and all other positions that they occupy is that the same same attitude we have when we go to hospital and we are uh, we are served by a female doctor is the same same attitude that we should have toward these diksha gurus because the main aim is to get cured when we go to the hospital and uh, also our main intention and aim toward this is that diksha gurus is to get the message of Krishna and not other intentions so I think that should be our attitude. Okay, thank you very much. Next person. Amritesh Mishra Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, am I audible? Yes. Yes, from you are. Maharaj, I carefully heard his question and he is asking about our attitude. So, our attitude should be following the GVC and because it is our responsibility to follow Prabhupada's road, that I am GVC, so following Prabhupada means following GVC. And because we must always remember, while uh, going towards uh, analyzing the GVC's decision on the light of Shastra, and all other all are very experienced devotees and they have served and pleased Prabhupada. And uh, our own spiritual master is also sitting in the uh, group. So we should, be, we should definitely maintain respect uh, for the decision. It is our responsibility to follow the GVC and it is GVC's responsibility to see uh, uh, Prabhupada's instruction are being implemented. Okay. So, uh, that is their primary, uh, uh, primary responsibility. Thank you, Prabhu. So, uh, let, let, them devo let, let them do their responsibility and our responsibility to follow the GVC. And uh, they are very excellent devotees. If they see, they apprehend any problem. Definitely they will revert back as it has happened in past also. Okay, very good, thank you. <laughs> if any problem they can revert back. <laughs> this has happened when Jonal Jonal Acharya system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they revert back. Oh yeah. yeah. So they will revert back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Maharaj, we've got a question in chat uh, through um, Abhimba Hari Prabhu. He's the Brahmachari. His mic is not working, so he wrote. His question is, without taking sannyas, without taking austere, uh, how can, uh, uh, can be a guru? That's his question. Yes, certainly can. We have many spiritual masters, they're not sannyasis. But austerity is naturally followed where there is devotional service. Anyone who does devotional service is followed by jnana, 
transcendental knowledge and vairagya, detachment. So that is there, where there is genuine devotion. Okay, we want to go on. Do you want to take questions or do you want to go with the slides? Is there a question? Uh, maybe comments from Arpit Prabhu and Vinod Prabhu. There are two more in queue. Okay, let's hear from them. Arpit Prabhu, go ahead. It's up. Uh, so, uh, actually, it was covered by Amritesh Krishna Prabhuji. So, uh, if we reconcile all the points, then we will come to the conclusion that Prabhupada has also told us that GBC will be the last statement. And I don't think there is, there is a much to discuss here because if we see the article by GBC, they have quoted numerous number of instances, numerous instances, not one or two or three, ten, twenty instances. Like in one of the instances, Srila Prabhupada is saying, those possessing the title of Bhakti Vedanta will be allowed to initiate disciples. And one line above, Prabhupada says, I want that all of my spiritual sons and daughters will inherit this title of Bhakti Vedanta. Okay. So if we reconcile all these points, then we can come to the understanding that what GBC is doing, it's according to the instructions of Srila Prabhupada. And just one more point I would like to add, that if we consider this point that Prabhupada ji, well, years he has spent it in doing a lot more things. Then what my understanding goes that disciples of Shila Prabhupada, they know and they admire and they love Shila Prabhupada much, much, much more than all of us. So what they think Shila Prabhupada would, had instructed them, they are trying to implement it in the right manner. So instead of again and again uh, doubting and discussing about the GBC's dis dis decision, we can also focus on the like more important things, more important points, which is related to our own individual life. This is on my personal level. I'm sharing my particular view. Thank you so, very much. Thank you very very nice. Thank you. Next, pa one more quote, one more opinion. Vinod Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a, uh, two questions. I mean, one question is, uh, when we taking Brahmana initiation, we we chanting Gayatri mantra. So Gayatri is a woman, right? So we chanting Gayatri mantra. And one more thing, and second question is, we called uh, Krishna Madana Mohana. So we called as well as Srimadhi Radharani Madana Mohana Mohini. So. I need to uh, um, I need to know what is the uh, meaning is this? What is the meaning? Ha. Huh. Madan Mohan Mohini. Yes. You don't know? I don't know. Well, it's there in the neck to the because road. because we are talking about women's right. So, so uh, before diksha, I mean taking diksha, we only chant Hare Krishna Mahamandra. Then, the next step we taking Brahmana initiation. We want, they only chanting Gayatri Mandra, right? So Krishna will not listen to anyone. Only his devotees, pure devotees. And as well as Srimadhi Radharani, right? Yes. Is it right, Prabhu? Yes. Is it, does it make any sense, Prabhu? Yeah, Krishna hears from his pure devotees, yeah. He hears, he hears from everyone, but he gives special attention to his pure devotees. And of course, the best of all the devotees is Srimati Radharani. Okay, so women have a... That's my... Yes, yes, what? yes, so, Maharaj. So that is my perspective. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. So, can someone read this slide for us? Srila Prabhupada used to accept Shri Guru Puja in front of the deities. One disciple asked him about this, and Prabhupada replied, Our goal is to develop love for Krishna. That is more important than the rules and regulations. In other words, Srila Prabhupada thought, Guru Puja could help us to develop love for Krishna more than following the rules. 
to not worship someone in the temple, it means that some principles are more important and some rules are less important. The acharya or the advanced devotee can guide us to understand the proper perspective. Okay? Go ahead. Someone please read this. Association with those devoid of devotion to the Lord. First Mayavadi, second pretenders, third atheist, one who does not believe in Krishna. So these are all Jana Sanghas. This is the, the non-devotee people. These are people we don't want to associate with. So how do we preach? We'll, we'll hear more about this when we... Go ahead. Next slide. Read, Prabhu. Association with, with those devoted of devotion to the Lord. It is better to accept the miseries of being engaged within bars and uh, surrounded by burning flame than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. Such association is a very great hardship. Chaitanya Charita Amrut, Madhya Lila, 2291. So the importance of association. Give up the association of non-devotees. Qualification. Lord Chaitanya was asked how to recognize a devotee. He said, they will give up the association of non-devotees. Very important. Lord Chaitanya was very strict with Makunda because Makunda was associating with people, Mayavadis, impersonalists. Lord Chaitanya chastised him. He said, sometimes you come with a straw in your teeth and other times you come with a stick and beat me. So Lord Chaitanya did not appreciate people going here and there. And similarly Prabhupada also did not like devotees to go outside of the Krishna consciousness movement for association. Go ahead, next slide. the page we are in? We are in Jana Sangha. Jana Sangha. Asad Sangha Tyag E Vishnu Vacha. Stri Sanghi Ek Asadhu Krishna Bhakta Ad. Association with men too much attached to women. Madhya Lila 22, 88 to 90. Association with person who are not spiritually advanced is forbidden. Lord Chaitanya advised Asat Sangha Tyaga. One should avoid persons who are attached to the temporary. Asat is one who is too materially attached, who is not a devotee of the Lord and who is too attached to women or enjoyable material things. Such a person, according to Vaishnava philosophy, is a Person non non gratis non grata. Shrimad Bhagavatam 3:29-18. Illicit illicit association with women outside of marriage. What are the symptoms of the age of Kali? They are first illicit connection with women. Second indulgence in meat eating. Third, in intoxication and fourth, taking pleasure in glamorizing. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.16.10 Association with one's wife not according to religious principles. Sex life 
with one's wife is equal to prostitution if the regulations are not properly followed. Srimad Bhagavatam 3, 14, 33. When the wife is accepted as a sense gratificatory agency, personal beauty is the main consideration and as soon as there is a break in personal sense gratification, there is dis disruption or, or divorce. Srimad Bhagavatam 3, 14, 19. Okay, so a lot of instruction there. Go ahead. Next, no, go ahead. Next slide. Shall I read it, Mara? Yeah, please. Learning experience. Take 10 minutes to reflect on the attitudes and behavior advocated in the letter of instruction. Select a partner and share realizations or areas within which you need to improve and how you think you can best do it. Give each other feedback. Be prepared to share with the rest of the class points that have come up in your discussions that you think will help others improve their devotional service. Okay, that would be a nice exercise. I don't know how much time we have left. What's the time? Maharaj, we've got 30 minutes we left. Three, two, one. Oh, really? 30 minutes. Okay. Well, why don't we just take 10 minutes and you can just reflect with a partner? Can we put people into pairs? Yes, Maharaj, we can divide it into breakout rooms. So, uh, how many participants should be in one room? Oh, two or three. Two? Three, okay. So, I'm creating automatic rooms, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, I'll set timer for 10 minutes for the discussion, all right? Yes, yeah, exactly 10 minutes because we're tight on time. We don't want to give too long. And uh, post discussion uh, for any questions and answer, shall we give them time or shall I ask them to uh, mail Krishna Geshe Prabhu? Uh, they can mail Krishna Geshe Prabhu, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. 